All right, thanks for joining me. This is going to be an exciting one. So we're continuing with my master plan here. And last episode, we crossed off, finished what you started. So I finally knocked out some of those projects that I didn't quite drive to completion yet. So I'm, I'm good with those. We're moving on to in-ground irrigation. So this is something I've wanted for a long time. I never quite had the motivation to do um, I know I could just pay somebody to do it, but that is not my style. So, um, we're going to get after it. We're going to plan in this episode, then we're going to buy everything, then we're going to get that sucker in the ground. So, uh, let's dig in and see how we plan this sucker out. Now, this is not a, a light task. I've, I've seen some videos where guys... You know, they add a zone for like four shrubs. We are going after 30,000 square feet of turf grass and we're gonna cover it all with sweet, sweet in-ground irrigation. So let's get to it. All right, one of the first things we have to do um, when we're dividing up our sprinkler layout into zones is know um, what pressure and volume of water we're we're getting into our house, what service we have. Now I did a, a bucket test on my outdoor spout and you can see that comes off right here and that's a pretty small half inch line there. And I got 10 gallons per minute for a flow rate on that. But my plan is, um, here you can see my water meter and my service line here coming in. This is inch and a quarter goes down to one inch coming out of the meter and you can see it comes up here and, and goes to the rest of the house. Um, so I'm planning on coming off of this PEX line up here, which is a one inch water line, which is significantly bigger than the, the small line coming off for my outdoor spigot. So I'm going to tap off that. Um, to find the flow rate I'm going to get on this one inch line, I'm going to look at tables on the internet. So I'm roughly 80 PSI, I know that, uh, for my water service. And so I'm gonna look up flow rate for a one inch service line at 80 PSI. And that should give me a, a good idea of, of what my actual flow rate will be coming off this larger um, water line. All right, I did some online sleuthing and found out the rule of thumb for a half inch line between two and 100 PSI should flow about 14 gallons per minute. I measured 10, about 10, um, after going through a 50 foot hose. Um, so 4% loss in that is, is not a big deal. Um, sounds about right. And so for a one inch line between 220 and 100 PSI, they're saying should flow 37 gallons per minute. So I'm gonna go with that. Uh, I might retest it once I got to tap into this up here, um, go through my sill, go through my backflow preventer outside, and I'll have to have a shutoff valve in here with also a provision to probably two valves in here with a provision to blow out the system um, before winter to get the water out, there, out of there. But I'll show you how I do that. Um, but my zones, I'm going to size 37 gallons per minute. You can see my run here. Um, this is my incoming line, inch and a quarter goes up through the meter. And then uh, up here where I'm gonna tap into it is one inch. So my, my length of one inch pipe here is pretty low. Obviously my distribution piping outside is gonna have to get kind of long. So I'll just uh, account for a one inch, uh, but I'm not far from an inch and a quarter. So I should not have a flow rate problem. I saw it on the YouTubes. Now that I know what water I can deliver to my sprinklers, I can start laying out the sprinkler system. So where I started was on Google Earth. You can see here we're on Google Earth. We've got an aerial of our property here and we can use this ruler function um, to measure the property here. So you could go outside and do this 
with a tape measure if you want, but I found this is a very quick way um, to get measurements that are quite accurate um, with an overhead view. Um, because I'm old school, I then transferred this information to a hand sketch. Now this isn't to scale, um, but it's my overall layout. And because I know I can deliver about 37 gallons per minute to my system, and the sprinkler heads I'm gonna go with um, seems like an average flow rate is about three gallons per minute. I can have uh, about 10 of those um, fully on in any given zone. So I've started um, laying out sprinkler heads. I kept them in pencil because I'm actually gonna go out and lay them out with flags in the yard and verify the locations of them. Um, so this is a rough draft of the overall layout here, putting them every 25 feet. So you want each sprinkler head to be able to shoot to the next one. And so the spray radius on these particular heads, um, I'm going with a standard Rainbird gear driven, they say is up to 30 some feet. So I thought it was conservative to space them out every 25 feet. Um, and then I dissected each groups where it made sense, uh, landscape, running pipe to, and then the number of sprinkler heads. So you see I ended up with five. Um, and again, this is a rough draft. I'm going to go out, actually put flags in here, zone by zone, and make sure I'm happy with the layout. And then once, I'm, once I get that modified on here, I'm going to lay out um, my zone valves and then supply lines. Um, so right here is where, where my supply comes into the house. This rectangle here is obviously the house. Um, so this is what I'm gonna use for, for the overall plan here. Let's get out in the yard and see what this actually looks like in reality. All right, I'm in zone one here. I've got some marking flags and I've got the rough shaft of my plan. So I'm going to go just real quickly jab these suckers in where it says on the plan. And uh, then I'm going to do some measurements and make sure I'm actually spaced out decently and, and tweak it from there. Sprinkler heads marked out here just real quick via my, my rough draft here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and, and fine tune these, I can tell, just by throwing them out there quick. I'm not spaced out. Obviously, I have a lot of irregular shapes to deal with here. Um, if I had a nice square rectangular yard, this would be pretty simple, but uh, I've got anything but that. I've got a lot of arcs and, and sweeping areas like that. So um, I want these 25 feet apart approximately. Each one of my steps I know is about two and a half feet, so I'm going to go... Um, 10 steps between these and just kind of make sure that I get these tweaked and equal distance apart. This is not, this is just kind of to finalize my rough draft into the final draft. Um, then I'm going to get all the utilities marked and determine where I'm going to run my supply lines and my trenches and all that stuff. So kind of an iterative process here. Um, wouldn't need to do all these steps if I had nice uh, define shapes. I could just measure and, and plunk them in there, but I don't anyway. So I'm going to fine tune this right now. All right. Working my way through this. It seems like, uh, my rough, rough draft there is pretty close. Let's see here. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, I got things tweaked there. Now, just need to update my map here. There's 
a few little changes uh, for the most part. Things look pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I laid out zone one with my flags and confirmed the spacing. Um, and I made a few little edits, but what I'm going to do now is just take my marker and lock these in place and know that I've got them confirmed. Now I'm going to repeat this for the other zones and uh, lock them in. I may have to make zone changes depending on how many I end up with, but um, we'll see how it turns out. So I finished confirming all the sprinkler locations. I was researching then on sprinkler controller and what I was going to purchase for that and discovered that basically um, they're, the one I want is a six zone controller. So instead of having five zones, I thought I'd be more conservative and make them into six. So I had to dissect what I had laid out there already um, and this map got very confusing. So out with that map, here we've got uh, Rev2, which is on cool yellow paper here. And as you can see, I, I've got children, so uh, my paper supply is basically uh, construction paper, um, but it works. So you can see here now I have six zones. Zone one is the front yard here, uh, zone two, the side yard, zone three, half of the backyard, then four, five, and six are sort of uh, the south side here. And I purposely grouped these sprinkler heads in similar zones here because um, these sprinkler heads basically from here up are at a higher elevation than my water supply here over at the house. So what that means is I'm going to have to uh, remote locate backflow preventer valves up here to make sure they're above the highest sprinkler heads here. Um, so I've laid out a water supply, a dedicated supply that's going to have to be trenched in and run up to this high spot on the property um, for those valves. So I'm, I've also done some research on, on valves and I think I'm gonna go with a control valve with built-in uh, backflow prevention um, for these. So those, those three for these will be remote located here. Valves for zone one, two, and three will be by the water supply here right next to the house. The other thing I did on here is I indicated electrical and uh, cable is coming into the house in this general location. Uh, I also put on here the buried downspout lines or the gutter drainage lines. Um, all things that are buried in the ground that will have to be avoided. Now, um, before I actually start trenching, I'm going to call Digger's Hotline and get the exact locations of these, but I just wanted to have them on the map um, so I can kind of pre-plan pre out where my trenches are going to be and where I need to hand dig and uh, be careful of utilities. Now this uh, map has allowed me to kind of keep straight uh, sprinkler head locations, but also a little bit of this plumbing piece. It gets to be a, a, a bit confusing mentally without writing this stuff down of where these valves are going to be um, and what sprinklers they're going to supply and that sort of thing. So um, the most complicated part of that is where it comes out of the house or from from the water supply. So I sketched this up as an idea on how I'm going to make that work. So my water supply from in the home um, will come through here. This is in the basement. I'll have a provision for a manual isolation valve here. Um, and then I will tee off after that with another isolation valve, shutoff valve, so that I can drain the system back from here and then also have a provision for an air fitting to apply compressed air if I isolate here and then uh, toggle on the control valves um, to blow out the zones before winter. Then I'm gonna penetrate the wall of the home. And then I'm going to have basically this manifold set up. I'm choosing to do this above ground with these anti-siphon uh, 
zone control valves right in one. I thought that was convenient instead of having them buried in a box. That's much harder to get at. I can come over, inspect these, see if they're leaking, um, things like that. And if they do go bad, I've got a union on here and a threaded connection here to where I can swap those out relatively easily and have access to the wires. Um, you can see I've got zone one, two, and three here, the valves on this block, and they will go down into the ground with a barb fitting that will then hook on uh, a flexible irrigation pipe and then go out to the zone. Uh, because I have those remote located zone valves, four, five, and six, I need a straight through provision to provide water to those zones. So I'm just gonna basically come through here with a dedicated line to supply um, water to those lines. And I, I wrote down my bill of material here as it gets quite confusing with all the different components um, that I need. So I've got PVC written down here um, for this. I know that will have to be painted so it doesn't UV degrade, but also thinking of covering this with one of those fake rock, those hollow fake rocks to keep this nice and uh, covered. But anyway, that's quite convenient to pop that off and, and have this exposed. Um, this is also in a relatively hidden part of the home um, with some bushes and shrubs on, on this side. So I thought this would work quite well. Um, the other option here is to go with a galvanized or copper. So I'm a little bit up on the air of that. I'm going to uh, see availability of all of these components before I make that decision. But this is my plan. So... I've got my map, I've got some of my plumbing details, I did talk to my water department already and cleared uh, these type of valves for backflow back prevention. Um, so I'm all squared away there. Alright, I went over my plan. That's the end of this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode when I actually start getting my hands dirty and attempt to put in this sprinkler system. Let's see how it goes. Adios. I wanted to show you guys a perfect example of why water is so important. You can see I start to dry out um, along the roadway here first. And the problem with that, you can see some dormancy coming in, especially at this corner where the uh, driveway meets the cul-de-sac here. And as soon as it does that, it opens the opportunity for weeds. So you see I've got some crabgrass in here um, all along this edge it's it's the worst the, the minute that grass goes dormant the weeds start moving in um, I couldn't stand it I sprayed I'm not watering uh, because I'm in the process of planning my in-ground irrigation I'm gonna dig this up to put that in and this will be a problem of the past um, but I'd much rather use water than wait the grass goes dormant now I got to spray these with chemical um, to get rid of that stuff so to me it doesn't get any more natural than water and the tough part is um, in in our climate and region here in the northern midwest i get plenty of water it's just not spaced out enough um, to keep things from going dormant all the time